there, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a book review for Credence by Penelope Douglas. So full disclosure here, I ended up picking up Credence because I read Birthday Girl by the same author and I really enjoyed it. I do have a full review for Birthday Girl which I will link up in the cards as well as in the description if you're interested in checking it out. And I have some thoughts about this book. It was definitely different from Birthday Girl. I will be discussing some spoilery aspects to this story, so please make sure that you're paying attention to the timestamps down below if you do not wish to be spoiled. Before we go ahead and get on into the review, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, as well as giving this video a like to throw my channel a little bit of support. Credence is a contemporary romance novel by Penelope Douglas, and in this book we are following a main character named Tiernan. Tiernan is 17 years old and she is the daughter of a famous film actress, and then her father is also in like the Hollywood scene. Needless to say, her parents are very wealthy, she wants for nothing. However, she has been neglected affection-wise for most of her life. Her parents were more concerned with each other as well as their fame than her. So while Tiernan was not necessarily abused, she definitely did not get the attention that she needed from her parents in order to grow into a healthy emotional young person. Early in the book Tiernan's parents both pass away and like I said she's almost 18 years old so she can't be on her own yet and her parents ended up leaving her in the care of her father's stepbrother who is her technically her uncle Jake but not by blood by marriage and she has never met uncle Jake before she barely even knew about him and he has two sons that are in their like late teens early 20s and they live in Colorado. Her uncle Jake gets a hold of her and invites her to come to Colorado to kind of get her Life together and then when she's 18 and she can go off to college and become an adult and be independent. Tiernan really has nothing holding her in Los Angeles and she decides to take her uncle up on his offer. When she gets to Colorado she finds out that her uncle and his two sons live kind of like in this secluded part of the mountains. There is a town but whenever winter comes they are snowed in for the majority of the year or half year and what her uncle and his sons do is they repair and sell motocross bikes, but they also have kind of like a ranch with animals and they do some of their own farming. So they are sequestered somewhat. They're very self-reliant, very self-sufficient, and this is a type of life that Tiernan has never experienced because she has spent all of her life getting everything given to her. Where the romance comes into this is Tiernan ends up having some sort of relationship with each one of the males in this book and romantic relationships slash sexual relationships with each one of these characters from Jake to his son Noah to his son Caleb and the book not only addresses like that dynamic in the house between all of the characters but it also addresses Tiernan's growth as a character. Normally how I structure my reviews is I discuss my likes first and then my dislikes, but for this particular book I'm going to address my dislikes first because I had way more of them than my likes. I'm just going to start off with the length of it. This book was over 500 pages long and it did not need to be 500 pages long. There are other reasons, but as we were continuing on with the story, I found myself losing interest with it as the story went along and that was not only because of the length but also because of how the plot progressed but this book definitely did not need to be 500 plus pages. The plot was a hot mess to me and the reason why is because, and I'm, I'm not even going to address the taboo-ness of this yet, but we see Tiernan who is at first fully 100% attracted to Jake. So if we think back to Birthday Girl, the main character, the two MCs in that plot were 19 years apart and in this book it's basically the same thing. So you have Tiernan attracted to Jake and vice versa and yes they do act on those impulses. So for the first like I want to say third of the book like she and Jake are like all about each other and I was like okay so he's going to be the one that she's focusing on where do the other two characters play into it because I knew going into it the other two characters were going to be a big part and then it was like Penelope just put a stop on that relationship like Jake left the house to go hunting or something for a couple days and then she was left alone with the two brothers and then she entered in a relationship with the two brothers and then when Jake came back it was like he never existed so it was like okay I feel like Penelope had to kind of twist the plot to make that happen where she was experimenting with Noah, one of the brothers, and then Caleb. And it just felt very abrupt to me. And the way that 
the whole family handled the situation when Jake came back into the picture. It just wasn't realistic. And then you have Caleb. So Caleb is one of the brothers. And something that's unusual about him is that he has trauma from when he was a child. He was uh, left alone for many, many days by his mother. By the way, their mother is in prison due to child neglect and drugs and a bunch of other stuff. And Caleb was left like in a car for a couple days while his mother was on a drug fest and that traumatized him. So because of that, he shut down emotionally and he doesn't talk. And I find it really hard to read from characters' perspectives, because yes, we do get part of Car uh, Caleb's perspective. I find it very hard to read characters that are mute because we're reading a book. We're not listening to people talk. Like, I need my characters to be able to communicate, and Caleb was 100% incapable of communicating. He didn't even try to write. He didn't even try to sign language. He didn't do anything. Not only that, but I did not like Caleb's character in general. He was horrible. He was violent, straight up violent, didn't know how to regulate his emotions, acted like a toddler who would like throw stuff, throw food, flip over stuff whenever he didn't get his way. And he's like a 20 something year old guy. And it was so aggravating because I found him to be one of the most, I don't wanna say a badly written character, but yeah, you had trauma when you were four years old. I can barely remember things that happened to me when I was four years old. You cannot justify 20 years later from your trauma doing the things that you do, especially now that you are an adult and can rationalize differently. So here's where I'm going to discuss a little bit of spoilers here. So if you do not want to be spoiled, please check the timestamps down below. So in the end, Caleb is the one that Tiernan chooses to be in a monogamous relationship with after having had a sexual relationship with his father, Jake, and her, his brother, Noah, which to me, we'll get to that in a second. But Tiernan was like, I love Caleb. He loves me. I'm like, how does he love you? Love is showing kindness and patience and goodness and selflessness to your partner. That is love. Love is not throwing food at you. Love is not destroying your stuff. Love is not pushing you, shoving you, being violent towards you. And he was for part of the book. And then not only that, but he doesn't talk. He can't communicate with you. How can you love him? So he was a horrible character, horribly written. And the fact that Penelope decided to pursue this relationship as part of the plot, when I saw that turn of events and that's what she was going to do, I completely lost interest in the story whatsoever. And I had to force myself to read the last 100 pages of this book because I just, I hated everything that she chose for this plot and I just wasn't interested anymore. Now moving on into the taboo-ness of this story. So for me, this is the way I have to think about it. I read a ton of fantasy. I love Brandon Sanderson. In Mistborn, the characters literally ingest metals and get magical abilities. If I go into my kitchen and eat a sheet of aluminum foil, I am not going to get a magical ability. So I'm able to separate my reality from fantasy. And even in romance, you have to do that because there is no person, I feel like, on this planet that would be 100% okay with all the events that went on in this book. Like, I just, I don't see it happening. For me, it's just Penelope's fantasy mind. She wanted to write the story and she expected her reader to be able to suspend their belief and understand that it's just a story. And that's what you have to do in order to stomach this story. Because the girl sleeps with the dad and sleeps with the brothers and everybody's this merry family. She ends up with one of them and everybody's okay. Like, can you imagine how awkward Christmases would be? Like, it's weird. Let's all just admit it, it's weird. And then the last thing that I didn't really like so much about this book, and this is just a subjective thing, is I couldn't really relate in any shape or form to Tiernan as a character because I have never been through what she's been through with regards to not having love or affection, um, feeling a lack of self-worth. I just have never experienced that. So anytime I'm not able to connect with a element of the story, especially a character and their experiences, I tend to like the book less. Going on into the things that I liked, even though I couldn't relate personally to Tiernan as a character, I really did appreciate her character development. In the beginning of the book, she is very emotionless. She's dealing with a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, you know, 
not a lot of self-esteem and by the end of the book she has just done a complete 180 she has grown into her own person has her own interests her own hobbies she's just learned so many new things about working on a ranch animals motocross engines hunting how to defend herself with a bow and arrow like just a ton of stuff and I really appreciated that she grew so much as a character and then the other two things that I liked, as always, Penelope does an awesome job with her angst and her romance aspects of the book and creating characters that have this awesome, awesome attraction to each other and sexual chemistry. It was very well written. And then lastly, I loved the setting of this book being in the mountains in this kind of secluded part of Colorado. And there were a couple of scenes where Tiernan was just taking in the beauty of the mountains and being out of the city. And I just felt for her in those instances. And I really enjoyed that part. All in all, Credence was an interesting read. There were parts of it that I really enjoyed and there were parts of it that I couldn't stand. And unfortunately, once I realized the character that Penelope was going to pair Tiernan with, I completely lost interest. I did not agree with the, his actions. I did not agree with how he treated her. I did not agree with the use of love between the two of them because at no time did he ever show her any type of love. But that's the decision that she made. Would I recommend this book? Maybe if you like taboo or somewhat dark romance, you might want to pick this up from your library, but it definitely wasn't a favorite romance read of mine, and I ended up giving this book two out of five stars. All right, y'all, that is my review for Credence by Penelope Douglas. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book and what you thought of it, or if you've read any other books by her, and I will see you all in another video soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.